So let's say Rick starts walking from the origin of coordinate axis. So here is our coordinate axis and Rick starts moving from the origin. So he walks 40 meters first towards east. And before we do that, let's label this as north, this as east. So first off, he walks, he walks 40 meters towards east. So we can label this vector as vector A equal to 40 I. Then he walks 50 meters north. So let's make him walk 50 meters north. And we can label this as vector B equal to 50 J. And then he decides to walk 60 degrees off north towards east. And he walks 30 meters. So his displacement vector would look something like this. So what he's done is he has walked at an angle of 60 degrees. The 60 degrees, in which case this would be 30 degrees. And let's call this vector C. In the coordinate notation, all we need to do is find its projection on x-axis, its projection on y-axis, and then we can define the vector. So we know that the projection of vector C on x-axis is written as magnitude of the vector, which we know is 30 meters, into cos of the angle that the vector makes with the positive direction of x-axis. And the y component of it would be 30 sine 30 degrees. So let's put each of the three vectors over here. So vector A is equal to 40 i. Vector B is equal to 50 j. And vector C is equal to 30 cos 30, which is the value of the vector C on the horizontal axis and therefore we multiply it with the unit vector i plus 30 sine 30 times j and this and, and let's put the arrow sign on top of the vectors to give them to make them look like vectors so vector c would equal 26 i plus 15 j. So I have taken the value of cos 30, value of sine 30 and multiplied it by 30 to get these values. And you must also notice that I have treated each vector independently. So I have taken each vector separately. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these three vectors to find the resultant vector. And you know that if you have two vectors, uh, let us say they are placed like this. They are placed like this. It's a rather untidy vector I've made. So, and they are placed like this. Then if the tail of the second vector is attached to the head of the first vector, you can say that the resultant vector is this. Likewise, if you see this walk path that Rick has made, it's something like this. It's this and then he's moved up and then he's moved like this. And each time you see the, the new vector has its tail attached to the head of the preceding vector. And therefore, the resultant displacement can be shown like this. This is a resultant displacement vector. So let's go ahead and make this resultant vector on this xy coordinate. So his resultant net displacement or the resultant vector is nothing but this and let's call this vector r. In that case, vector r, vector r would be nothing but the sum of vector a, b and vector c. So let's put each of the vectors is 40 i plus 50 j plus 26 i plus 15 j and we'll find that vector r equals 66 i plus 
65 j so the magnitude of this vector r would equals to the square root of 66 square plus 65 square which equals 92 meters so the length of this vector would equal 92 meters and the angle that it makes the angle it, that it makes with the x-axis let's call that angle theta would be determined by taking tan of theta is equal to the opposite side and you would see that the opposite side is nothing but this which we have found as 65 meters and the base base is nothing but this which we have found as 66 meters you see these, these values are right here so tan theta is equal to 65 upon 66 in which case if you take the inverse of this value tan inverse of this value you get theta is equal to tan inverse 65 upon 66 which gives theta as 44.57 degrees